Hello guys, how are we doing? Welcome back to the Free Amers. Those of you who didn't join me last night for the longer preview and a bit of more discussion about this game and you know building up to the game and talking about uh, the Seville result and talking about the impact of that. This is the short preview. I know a lot of you guys prefer the short preview. So here is the short preview for you guys. This will be the 219th meeting between the two clubs, Spurs versus West Ham. Huge game, a game we always look out for. Probably one of the first fixtures we look out for. And again, we both banter each other about cup finals and stuff like that. Listen, both teams take this game and it hurts them as much as it hurts us to lose. I'll be honest with you, I'm not as bothered about it after the Seville game. Uh, to be honest with you, my eyes are on April 7th Lyon game. I know that's wrong. You know, we need to keep winning games to keep that momentum up. But I did say, and I actually tweeted it, and I've seen Ryan say it on uh, West Ham Fan TV, and I actually tweeted exactly the same thing probably as he was thinking it in the stadium. I don't care if we lose this game. I really don't. They'll love it. They'll probably give it, oh, West Ham have been bought down a peg and all that tosh that they come out with. Um, and they'll come out of hiding as they always do when they beat West Ham. And then if, if, we, if we were to win yesterday, they'll go hiding for another year. I'll tell you what, if we won it, if we do win the Europa League as well, they would be... Devastated, absolutely devastated. Will we win it? I don't know. Listen, there's still a lot to do, and I'm not counting my chickens. We have a massive chance to win it. Will we win it? Who knows? Oh, but their fans, they were going to hide him forever if we were to win a trophy before they do. So, oh, if there's a god out there, please. Um, they're currently sitting seventh. Listen, they've had a good season. It's a mixed season. Um, obviously, they changed managers. Conte came in, a really top class manager. No one can. You know, discredit that. Not a lot of problems at the club early doors with obviously the Harry Kane wanting to go. He seems to be back in, back into amazing form now on 20 goals, breaking on Ree's record this year. Uh, in the week, obviously surpassed Frank Lampard as well. Only a few left in front of him now. I believe it's like Andrew, uh, Andy Cole, Wayne Rooney, uh, I think Aguero, and then obviously the big man Shearer. I hope he never breaks Shearer's record. I absolutely love Alan Shearer. Loved him as a player, and I really don't want Harry Kane to break that record. Um, obviously, Son's in there, up there with their top goal scorers as well, and Lucas Moura filling in as the third top goal scorer for them. Definitely out for them is right back Tangon Gur, uh, Skip and Sessignon. They seem to have a more settled side recently. Uh, Conte has seemed to have got what he wants now. He seems to know his side, obviously, until he can buy players, and if he even stays there, who knows? Um, They'll probably line up with a 4-3-3 with the fluid fullback system. Uh, Lorries in goal, Romeo, Eric Dyer, uh, Davis, Doherty, uh, Bentancourt, Hoiberg, Reglion, who played really well against us. Um, Kulovensky, I believe that's how you pronounce it. They're two of the guys, obviously, that they brought in from Juventus, Bentancourt and Kulovensky, Harry Kane and Son. Listen, their front line hurts me to say it. Arguably one of the best in the Premier League. They're absolutely terrifying when they run it. Their defence, though, can be got at. They can be got at. Uh, you know, Lorries, I, I work with a lot of Tottenham fans. They're always slating Lorries at the moment, saying, you know, he's not on the level. And I hope they don't come back to bite me. He has a weldy in the, uh, on Sunday. But people like Davis, people like Dyer, they've got mistakes in them. And if we can get them, who knows? Um, last season, obviously, was the famous 3-3. Free -free, the Lanzini, um, what a goal that was. We did play them, obviously, at, the London, um, at their ground earlier, back in December, in the quarter-final of the League Cup, which we did lose 2-1. Um, and obviously, during that time, we was going for a bit of a bad patch. So, I don't think we can take too much out of that game. Um, in terms of the last time we played them this season, was at the London Stadium with a great 1-0 win. It's always great to beat them. Let's not get away from it. We hate to lose this game, love to win it. I'll take a draw, but... I'm not that bothered. I really am. For the first time in a Tottenham game, I haven't got sick nerves. Usually a few days before, I've stopped feeling sick and nervous. I, I haven't got that because I think Seville was just... I'm so proud of them boys. They, you know, they've got points in the bank that they can lose a couple if they... Do. I don't want to lose it, but I'm not that bothered. I really am not that bothered. I want West Ham to win every single game, but this Tottenham game, I haven't got... Anywhere near that feeling I have. Maybe I will a few hours before kickoff and when it actually starts building up tomorrow. But at this current moment, I'm very relaxed about the game. Um, 
they like to play their strengths is through balls, obviously counter-attacking, they're very fast, very quick. You know, I could be the best striker in the league, well, he is probably. Free kicks, very, very good at them, and playing down a wing. Uh, the weaknesses are defending set pieces, corners, um, set pieces, so if, suit, if Cresswell's delivery is on it, may have a big, big chance. Um, stopping opponents, creating chances is also listed as a weakness. The style of play, short passing, middle and right wing, obviously with the fluid fullback system that is really, you know, the modern day style now. For those of you interested, Moyes has played Conte five times. Moyes has only been the winner once though, with one draw and three losses. Conte has played, obviously come up against West Ham, where he's been the Chelsea and Spurs manager, six times, winning three, drawing one and losing three two of those games so it's a bit of a mixed bag looking at us guys out for us still Soufal still Bowen still Bono you know Bowen hopefully hopefully is back for that game on the 7th of April I'd rest him until then maybe hopefully he might be able to get a game in before and if not maybe the away leg but you know we do need him back get as much as those boys are putting a good job and they've done really really well we always want our best players out there, and he's another guy who can score goals. Something that we've been lacking. Last two games, yes, we've been scoring from free play, which is brilliant. Need to keep that up. Need to keep that up. In terms of us, guys, it's very hard to know what team he's going to put out. Obviously, after 120 minutes of a really, you know, hard working game. I wouldn't say a grueling game, because I don't think, you know, they offered that much, but it was a hard working game because we made them play like that. We had to work that hard to make nullify them and play like that. Um, you know, you'd expect Fabianski probably to come in for Ariola. Apart from that, there's not really much else unless he was to start Yarmolenko or maybe Vlasic in this game. There's not much else he can do really in terms of changing the team around. I trust Moyes to come up with something. I don't think we'll get spanked. I, I don't think many teams do spank us now unless we're really, really tired on Sunday. That's the only reason I can see that we could maybe concede twos. But, you know, we don't get our bellies tingled that much anymore. Zuma, Dawson, Zuma, Diop, whoever plays, seems to be able to do a job for us. Interesting fact, though, if we do win, we will leapfrog Manchester United. And there's a good, good chance that, you know, obviously Arsenal play this weekend as well. If Arsenal were to lose, I'm not saying they will, but if they were to lose, that fourth place is wide open. If we lose, though... Now, I know earlier in the video I said I'm not bothered, but actually, if we were to lose, that probably is the end of top four. No, listen, top four is a massive dream. It's a massive dream. And the fact that we're fighting for it in two fronts with only, what, eight, nine games left is incredible. But listen, I'll bite your hand off for six right now. That You know, it's fifth or six, you know, that guarantees Europa League. Because you assume one of them bigger clubs will win the FA Cup, which means Europa League players will drop down. You know, we've had a taste of it now. We want it again. This is, and that would be a true sign of consistency, the fact that you can qualify for Europa League, have a really long campaign in Europa League, and still qualify for Europa League. And with such a thin squad, that would be such an achievement. Like, these teams that play Champions League and regularly play in Europe, they have massive squads. They have Champions League squad, Premier League squad. We, we haven't got that. We've got a squad. A 11, even. Not even a squad. We've got an 11. So... You know, the fact that we're still in it is amazing. And I, listen, I think it'll be, a, it'll be a good game. It'll be a good game. I think we need to be winning the game before the hour mark. I think that crucial first, that first hour is quite crucial in this game because I think the last 30, you know, players like Antonio, players like Socek, um, you know, and then players that played 120 minutes, they're going to be blowing. And... That is where Tottenham could hurt us. So we need to be winning at that point because if, if I think maybe Tottenham might score early, but I think if they don't, they potentially will definitely score in that last half an hour where we could be tired. In terms of prediction, uh, I think we're going to lose 2 1. I think it's going to, I think we'll just be a little bit tired. I think that might kill us a little bit. Obviously, but one thing as well that I've just missed and just coming me a doubt. There's no games for a little while after this as well. Obviously, there's the international break now. So then players should just give it everything, you know, just give it everything, you know. That most of them players, popular ones that are internationals, have got a rest after this game. It's Mark Noble, if we do see him, his last ever 
Tottenham away game, you know how much it means to him. Declan Rice knows how much this means. Lanzini's always great for a goal against them. Antonio, what better time to get back in form and start scoring again against Tottenham. Yeah, enjoy the game, guys. I'm going to be watching it. I um, can't wait. Have some fun. Watch it. But, guys, listen. Just enjoy the rest of this season. Live in the moment. Live in the moment that... West Ham are a good club at the moment because it might not last forever. But you listen, we've had a long time of mediocrity and, you know, we've had great moments and great matches. But let's actually sit. If we was a neutral fan, we'd be saying, I want to be like West Ham. For years, I said, I want West Ham to be like Leicester. I want West Ham to be like Everton. You know, a few years ago when Everton were consistently up there. We are that team now. We are that team. So enjoy it, guys. Enjoy it. Anyway, guys, thank you so, so much for staying loyal to the channel. Please hit the like button. Please comment and subscribe. Until next time, come on, you guys. Let's go and beat them.